Hello guys, welcome back to the Seven Engineering YouTube channel. Please subscribe our channel for our daily Seven Engineering videos. Today, our lecture includes the basics of the Seven Engineering, and I will discuss the different topics. Uh, there is the lap length, uh, the development length, uh, the crank bar, and the lapping zone in beam and column. So I will discuss one by one with explanation. The first one is the lapping length. The lapping length can be defined as uh, the length in which we overlap these two steel bars. For example, if this is a beam, so I, when I place the one steel bar, when there is a shortage of the length of the steel bar, then we overlap this bar, bar with another bar. So we call this length is the overlapping length or the lapping length. And this lapping length should have a standard uh, uh, should have a standard length given to us by different codes. In case of the beam, this overlapping length should be equal to the 60 into diameter of the smaller bar. D is the diameter of the smaller bar. While in case of the uh, column, this overlapping length, for example, if this is a column, there is a one steel bar, and we overlap this steel bar with another steel bar, so this is called the overlapping length or the lapping length and this lapping length in case of the column is equal to the 48 into diameter of the smaller bar. This D represents the diameter of the smaller bar. Either this is the smaller bar or that one is the smaller bar. We should use the D and we, when we should multiply this with the 48. We will get the lapping length required in this column or in this beam. The second topic is about the development length. The development length can be defined as it is the length of the steel bar uh, which is uh, used to transfer the load, the stress from the one member and to the another member. For example, this is the beam and this is the column. So, the development length of the steel, this is the steel bar and this we increase the length from the beam and we and reinforce into the column. So, this steel bar from this length into this we call as the development length now this length will transport the load from the beam into the column and this development length will be responsible to transfer the load from one member into the other member which is the beam into the column so this is called the development length represented by ld and this development length is usually taken as 12 into diameter of the bar we can get the length of the development by this formula, by multiplying the diameter of the bar with the 12, we will get how much development length is required to take the load from one member into another member. Similarly, sometimes in the top, we also need the development length. So in this case, the development length is like this one. And its formula is also 12 into diameter of the bar. The third topic is the crank bar. The crank bar can be explained as for example, if I take this is the beam and these are the two columns at the supports. So the beams actually take the positive moment at the midpoint usually and the negative moments at the supports. So we provide the crank bar to take the positive moments and take the negative moments as well. So crank bar takes the positive moment as well as the negative moments at the supports. So this type of bar is called the crank bar. And this is the length of the crank bar and this length is usually taken as length is equal to the 0.42 into D. Where D is the distance from this bar into this bar, it means by subtracting this whole depth of the beam from the clear cover. So we will get the D. So this is the D distance from one bar into another bar. This distance we call it the D. So if we multiply with the 0.42, we will get the length of this crank bar, how much this length is. And this is a very important bar usually provided in the slabs and beam so that we should take both the positive end as well as the negative moment. The fourth topic is the lapping zone. Lapping zone is the dead zone in which we can provide the overlapping of the steel bars. For example, in case of the column, if this I consider this the column, so we can provide the lapping only in if this is the length of the column L so we are restricted to provide the lapping and only in this space L by 2 L by 2 we are only restricted to provide the lapping of the bars only in this portion for example this is the column this is the steel bar so we can overlap only in this portion 
L by 2, we are allowed to place the leaping zone only in this portion because the stresses in this portion is very really less as compared to the other portions. So we are okay to use the leaping zone. This is the leaping zone in case of the columns. L by 2 in the middle of the column. And subtracting this L by 4 from the top and L by 4 from the bottom, we cannot overlap the column, uh, we cannot overlap the steel bars in these two regions. In case of the beam, if I consider this is the beam, so, and these are the columns with the two supports. So, the, over, the overlapping zone is usually L by 8 from the one support and L by 8 from the another support. This is the lipping zone and we can overlap our steel bars here at this length. And we are not allowed to take the reinforcement to overlap in this portion. In this portion we are not allowed to overlap our steel bars. Because in this portion the pass to bending moment is maximum and we cannot take risk to provide the lipping zone in this portion. We can only provide from one support L by 8 and from another support L by 8 we can only provide the lipping in this region is provided by the American Concrete Codes, American Concrete Institute. So this was all about the today topic and don't forget to subscribe our channel for more videos.